Moses because of the hardness of your hearts suffered you to put away your wives but from the beginning it was not so in Matthew chapter 5 verse 31 to 32 and this is what Jesus said because in this scripture if you read the context Jesus was talking about relationship how to forbear with one another but he created an exception he said it has been said whosoever shall put away his wife let him give him give her a, a writing of divorce he now went further he said but I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife saving for the cause of fornication he said causes her to commit adultery and whosoever marries her that is divorced also commits adultery hello yeah. I know by the grace of God you are fine when it comes to marriage, marriage has to be between two grown adults who want to compromise and stay committed to each other in marriage. But there is something called divorce. Divorce is when two parties are no longer interested in the marriage again. So they depart their ways and go to live their own lives that they want. I'm going to show you a quick video from Dr. Ibadamna. He said, divorce started in the Bible with Moses. Let's listen to what he said. We don't worship from afar. We don't worship very close. We don't worship nearer. Draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. We worship in him. Zakotaba. The time cometh and now is. When true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit. In, 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 in. In spirit. Not near the spirit. In spirit. The believer is in spirit which is the reality the spirit is the reality of what christ has done the spirit is the reality of his resurrection and the believer is in that reality so we worship him in that reality philippians chapter 3 verse 3 we are the circumcision that worship god in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. We are that circumcision. Our worship is in the spirit. We worship in the revelation of the reality of his resurrection. We have received the spirit which is of God that we might know. So worship in spirit is worship in revelation of the reality we worship god in the revelation of the reality which is in christ jesus and we have no confidence in the flesh zikota in the first service we began to navigate some parameters if you were not here get the material sharp sharp zikolataya i say zikolataya we began to look at the, the temple. We've been dealing with the temple theology. And we began to see that the will of God was not for man to worship in a physical building. But when Moses communicated the will of God, which is God inhabiting man, the children of Israel did not believe. Hence, Moses gave them a project to work hard and build a sample of what he gave them that they rejected. Per adventure, by building that sample, the message may sink in. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5. Read for me. Who serve unto the example and Take note shadow. of the word example. Take note of the word shadow. Example and shadow means Darkness, the word skia, S-K-I-A, darkness of heavenly things. So, what Moses saw was heavenly things. The word heavenly is the word euphoranious. It means immaterial. God showed Moses immaterial realities. Moses spoke it, Israel did not receive it. So, he got them to construct a building for 46 years. By adventure in the process of building the message will sink in read for me girl 
As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle, for see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. All things according to the pattern showed to thee on the mount. So he saw something on the mountain that he was communicating in shadows to the audience of Israel. I've told you before that the book of Genesis is the message of Moses to the children of Israel in captivity about the promise of God. So Genesis is the, the promise of God of an exodus. The promise of God of deliverance. And we saw where God gave the promise to Abraham. And God swore an oath by himself. That by two immutable things, it's impossible for God to lie. What are the two immutable things? The promise, Evangelia, and the oath that he swore. So by that promise and the oath which he swore, God cannot lie. Alright? So which means when God promises, God does not promise based on your resources. He promises based on his own resources. That's why it's a self-fulfilling promise. It's not a promise predicated on a man. It's a promise predicated on his resources. Remember that the will of God is not a physical temple. The will of God is man. God wants to live in a man. God wants to inhabit man. God wants to indwell man. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14, 1 Corinthians 6 14. Sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Read for me, girl. 2 Corinthians 6 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Next verse. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? So remember, he's telling you the believer is righteous, the unbeliever is unrighteous, the believer is Christ, the unbeliever is Belial, the believer is, uh, uh, is, 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 is one who believes the unbeliever is an infidel. Read for me, next verse. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? The believer is the temple of God, the unbeliever is in idols. For ye are the temple of the living God, as God had said. As will, God has said. I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my Look people. at the preposition. I will dwell in them. Not in a physical house. In them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. That has been the plan from the beginning. I will dwell in them. I will live in them. I will walk in them. God wants to be domiciled in the born again man. That's been the plan. That's been the plan. Now, <clears throat> Moses communicating these realities to Israel had to employ the use of parables. Parables. Look at Psalm 78 verse 2. Psalm 78 verse number 2. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. So things that we are spoken of old, we are dark sayings. The word chida. Chida. It means illustrations or parables. So the communications of the Old Testament will be in types and shadows and in parables, illustrations, using natural things to communicate spiritual realities, using physical objects to communicate spiritual realities. But today, we don't use parables, comparing spiritual with spiritual. We speak in spiritual sense. How spiritual? The words I speak to you, they are spirit and their life. So today we use words to speak God's language. But in the Old Testament and in the four Gospels, parables, physical illustration, pictures had to be painted to draw out a lesson. And a parable is a mode of communication for people with a low IQ. 
that has facts, fictions, and all you take out of a parable is the lesson. So if the tabernacle of Moses was a parable, it means you shouldn't be carried away with the physical building and the activities. But look for the lesson. That the temple was supposed to be God's dwelling. Which means that one day, God will dwell in a man as his temple. Which became a reality in the resurrection. Am I communicating? Now, look at the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 13. Matthew, please, I beg of you, pay attention. Therefore, Read for me. Therefore, speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. So if you observe, they are the ones that are not seeing, they are the ones that are not hearing, they are the ones that are not understanding. It is not God keeping it from them. Next verse. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and, not, and shall not perceive. Next verse. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Their eyes they have closed, yes? Lest at any time they should see with their ears, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their hearts, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Next verse. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Seventeen. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the soul. So he now begins to give them parables. So why will Jesus use parables for these people? Matthew 13, 34. Matthew chapter 13, verse number 34. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. So that means all the time Jesus spoke in the four gospels, what did he employ? Parables. For without a parable spake he not unto them. Read verse 35 for me now. 35. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. So, parables will be used to communicate things kept secret from the foundation of the world. Jesus will employ the use of parables. Why? Because the people have closed their eyes. Because the people have refused to see and they have refused to hear. So, he will employ the use of parables because now they have made themselves a people with a low IQ. Is that not what Jesus meant? In the book of Matthew chapter 19, 19 verse 7. Matthew 19 verse 7. They say unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? Next verse. He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. Moses which will be Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. So that means there was a mode that Moses used in communicating because these people had hardness of heart. What is hardness of heart? Look at how Moses described these people who came out of Egypt. Deuteronomy 32, 20. Deuteronomy 32, verse number 20. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. They are children in whom is no faith. They refuse to believe the gospel. Hence, the mode of communication, which will be temple, ark of Noah, and all the different modes in the Old Testament, all parables, illustrations, shadows, to communicate spiritual truth about the plan of God concerning them. Look at Galatians 3.19 to further corroborate this fact. Galatians 3.19 Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, so the seed should come to whom the promise was made. 
And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. The law was added. The law was not the plan. It was added because of transgressions. And it was ordained by angels in the hands of a mediator, Moses. So Moses and angels administered to them the law of sin and death because they rejected the law of life in Christ Jesus. They are a forward generation, a people in whom there is no faith. In Hebrews chapter 4, look at the way they were described. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 and 3. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 and 3. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Next verse. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he, as he said. As I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Next verse. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his work. Next verse. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Next verse. Seeing therefore it remained that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. They that it was first preached to did not enter because of unbelief. The gospel preached to us was preached to them. But they refused this gospel. So Moses gave them the law because of the hardness of their hearts. The law was added because of transgression. These are a children in whom there is no faith. But we that have believed, when the gospel was preached, we believe, now we have entered rest. We have ceased from building tabernacles. We have ceased from constructing all kinds of stuff. Why? We have received what Christ has done. So we don't need to do our own. When you don't believe the gospel, you resign to works. When you receive the gospel, you enter rest. The rest of God. The rest of faith. The rest of righteousness. Apostle Michael Rupo deeply explained divorce and infidelity. Let's listen to what he said in this video. In Matthew, Chapter 5, verse 31 to 32. And this is what Jesus said. Because in this scripture, if you read the context, Jesus was talking about relationship, how to forbear with one another. But he created an exception. He said, it has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give, him, give her a, a writing of divorce. He now went further. He said, but I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, save him for the cause of fornication. He said, it causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever marries her that is divorced also commits adultery. Are you seeing what Jesus is saying? Jesus is saying, as touching marriage, there's nothing you who is a believer that should allow you or authorize you to release your wife unless she defies the bed by going the way of fornication. He said, if you put away your wife, on any account that is not fornication he said that woman if she marries anybody she has committed adultery and the person who marries her has committed adultery you too who gets married afterwards you have committed adultery so there is no way you can come out of marriage except if the bed is defined if there is fornication so for the unbeliever he can walk out of marriage because he doesn't fear God and he has no regard for scripture. Paul said in that situation, there's nothing you can do. But for the believer, the only way he can come out of marriage is either through death, that the other person dies, or the spouse go the way of fornication. Now, the statement Jesus also made here is pregnant because there's a second part of that statement. He said the only time that you can choose to put away your spouse is if for fornication. What it also means is that there is also a, a clause that is possible for you to forgive. But Jesus is not making it a law over you. Jesus is saying, should in case you have understood forgiveness to that level, if your wife defies, if your husband defies, you can choose to forgive. 
But in case you don't want to forgive, you have not sinned, you can choose to put her away. But if it is not only on fornication or on the ground of death, if you are a believer, if it is not fornication or death, if you put your wife away, he said, both you, the woman, and who marries her, eventually, you are all guilty of adultery. And so for a believer, there are two ways out of marriage. It's either death or infidelity. For an unbeliever, there are many ways out of marriage. He can choose to walk out. That's why you shouldn't marry an unbeliever. That's why we tell you, don't marry an unbeliever. If you marry an unbeliever, he can wake up tomorrow and say, I'm tired. He will walk away. There's nothing you can do. You will start your life afresh. That's why we also say, marry who fears God. Because if you marry a man who doesn't fear God, tomorrow he can go and get a lot of concubine. And the point will come where you can't bear it anymore. You will decide to walk away. So, these are the only two grounds from which a believer can be set free from marriage. Either by death or when the bed is defiled. How about a situation where your husband or your wife beats you? Because that's one area where people build an argument. That it's better to live than to die in marriage. There are two things I will tell you on that matter. Number one, marry correctly. If you marry correctly, that situation will not come. And marry correctly means marry who God is leading you to, not who you have feeling for. Number two, marry who fears God. And number three, marry who aligns with your purpose. A man who aligns with your purpose or a woman who aligns with your purpose knows your value. He will value you beyond the slap. A man who fears God will not slap you. And a man whom God chooses for you, 99% of the time will not slap you. And then, apart from that also, don't neglect warning signals. I'm not yet married, so I can't share a lot of experiences with you when it comes to marriage. But I'm just going to give you an information that I've really learned about marriage. Marriage should be an enjoyable journey between a man and a woman. But if you're a guy watching me right now, you have to marry a girl who loves you. Don't marry a girl you love. Because if you immediately marry a girl that you love, she is going to try to drain you. But if you marry a girl that she really loves you, she's going to care about your finances, she's going to care about your health, she's going to let you feel very okay within yourself. And you also have to respect her so that everything will be going on well and everything will be working out together for good for each other. Thank you very much for watching this video. And I'll see you another time.